Hello YouTube, today we're going to look at how to capture traffic with Wireshark. What methods are available and what are the advantages and disadvantages of each method. To help visualize, uh, we're going to use a very very simple network. So right here we have an 8 port switch. This is Tom's PC which is running Windows operating system and this is our internet router which is connected to our internet uh, service provider. So Tom uses his PC to connect to the internet to connect to his cloud based email. Now everything is working okay until one day Tom notices that he can't receive any email. We've tried a number of things to try and resolve the issue without success and we decide to use Wireshark to capture the traffic between Tom's PC and the mail server out on the internet to see if we can find out what's causing the problem. So what methods are available for us to capture the traffic between Tom's PC and the email server? Method number one. Now, method number one is to install Wireshark directly on the host. In this case, install Wireshark directly on Tom's PC. So, how do we do this? We log into Tom's PC with administration credentials or the equivalent. We go to Wireshark.org and we install Wireshark on Tom's PC. After the installation is completed, we can load up Wireshark and select what interface we want to capture on and then capture all the traffic that passes from Tom's computer to the network including all traffic to the cloud based email server. When the capture has finished this data can either be analyzed directly on Tom's computer or it can be saved to file and then transferred to another computer for analysis. So what are the advantages of this method? Well number one it's cheap Wireshark software is free to download so we don't need to spend on any additional hardware or software. Number two, it's quick. Wireshark can be downloaded in a couple of minutes and set up in another couple of minutes. It's very, very quick to get running. And number three, it's easy. There's no configuration involved. It's really just as easy as download the application and start the capture. But there are some disadvantages of this method of capturing traffic. Number one, the process of installing capturing on the host can interfere with the user's productivity. Now what do I mean by this? What I mean by this is it will be necessary to take over the user's PC for a period of time because first of all you need to install Wireshark on the computer. Second of all you need to start the capture. You need to leave it running in the background which is going to use up some of the resources and possibly slow down some of Tom's applications. And then thirdly most likely in most cases the user is usually needs to be involved in the starting or stopping of the capture or at least in the sending or copying of the capture file. I don't want to make too big a deal of this but basically what I'm saying is that the participation of the user in the install and capture process can distract them from their own work. Okay, I'll just leave it at that. The second disadvantage, you may not have the permission or passwords required to install Wireshark on this host. Um, if you're brought in as a contractor to look at this problem, the IT staff may not give you the passwords for the host. If somebody else is responsible for the host, they may not want you installing any software on it, particularly if it's running some important application and they fear that Wireshark may interfere with the running or performance of the software. For example, if the host was a server, the IT administrators will certainly not want you installing any software on it. And also in this point, you may not have the passwords install the software on the system. Remember, you need to be administrator equivalent to install the software on most operating systems. And without the admin passwords, you simply won't be able to install any software on it. Number three, disadvantage number three, Wireshark may not run on the device that you're actually trying to troubleshoot. See, in the example here, we're troubleshooting a Windows PC. But what about if we needed to troubleshoot a different scenario? What about, for example, if the host that we were trying to troubleshoot was a voice over IP phone? Or what about if it was a flat screen TV? A smart TV is very common now in real estate agents or just uh, bookies or whatever you would have them connected to a uh, big screen. Or what about if it was an access point? What about if you wanted to keep track of all your wireless traffic? You cannot install Wireshark on any of these devices. So you can only install Wireshark directly on the host when the host is capable of actually running Wireshark. So this is one disadvantage of this method where you install Wireshark directly on the host. So with that said, we've seen the advantages and disadvantages of this method. Let's move on to method number two. 
method two for capturing traffic with Wireshark is called port mirroring. And just to note that port mirroring is also called port spanning by some hardware manufacturers. Before I go into a description of what port mirroring is and how it functions, it's important to understand that port mirroring is a feature of the switch itself. Now, not all switches will support it, so before you even go about attempting to configure port mirroring on your switch, you need to consult your user manager manual to make sure that your switch actually supports it. With that out of the way, how does port mirroring work? Now the concept behind port mirroring is that you connect your monitoring workstation to a port on the same switch as the host whose traffic you want to capture. Using the switch's web management interface, you configure the switch to mirror all traffic from the source port to the port that your monitoring workstation is connected to. To go back to our example here, say we upgrade our switch to a uh, managed switch so that we can now implement port mirroring. Okay, so this is our super de duper managed A port switch which supports port mirroring. Tom's PC is connected to port 2 of our managed switch and we now hook in our monitoring workstation which is simply a, a PC or laptop with Wireshark installed on it. We connect this to port 1 of our managed switch. Then, using the interface on our managed switch, we configure the switch to send a copy of all traffic on port 2 out on port 1. From our monitoring workstation, we can now capture the traffic for Tom's PC on our monitoring workstation and analyze it from there. We have the option to capture, uh, to mirror the inbound traffic, the outbound traffic, or both. Uh, what are the advantages of port mirroring? Number one, we don't have to interfere with the running of the host computer that we're actually capturing from, that this is Tom's PC here. We don't need to download and install Wireshark on it. We don't need to interfere with the user doing their work. We don't need to acquire passwords so to, so to install the software on it, etc, etc, etc. Number two, port mirroring is flexible, it's easy to set up, and it can be switched on and off easily as required. Number three, Traffic from any network device can be captured using port mirroring, whether that be an IP phone or a smart TV. Remember previously we had the issue that it needed to be a Windows workstation or, or Linux or something that runs Wireshark, but now we could actually put uh, an IP phone in there and just the same, the traffic will be mirrored across between the ports and it doesn't make any difference. So what are the disadvantages of port mirroring? The disadvantages of port mirroring. Number one, as I mentioned earlier, you need to have a switch that supports port mirroring. And while they're not that expensive nowadays, it may mean that you have to upgrade your existing switch to set it up. Number two, if there's a lot of traffic to the port being mirrored, there's a chance that packets will be dropped and your capture file will then be incomplete. This incomplete capture file can also lead to confusion when you're reviewing it and the possibility of drawing the wrong conclusions from the information that you have captured. But overall, if you're not dealing with a huge amount of traffic, port mirroring is a good option to use. The last method we're going to use to discuss capturing traffic is using an Ethernet tap. An Ethernet tap is an external monitoring device that mirrors the traffic that passes between two network points. So the idea is that we break the network at a particular point where we want to monitor the traffic, then insert an Ethernet tap and the tap allows us to plug in our monitoring workstation and capture all the traffic that passes through this part of the network. Now there are many many types of tap, so rather than use a real world tap I'll just use a model of a tree port tap uh, to demonstrate the concept. So this is what I've come up with here. So we've got three ports on this tap. Port A is where we connect our host to. Port B is where we uplink to the switch. And port M is where we connect our monitoring workstation. On real life taps this will usually be called A slash B or something like that. So if A connected the host B is connected to the switch and M is where we connect our monitoring workstation. So if we take our previous example, so we what we had was we have a computer that we want to capture the traffic to and from. So this is Tom's PC again. So what we need to do is this. We need to remove Tom's cable from the switch and then insert our tap and then connect Tom's PC to port A 
then uplink port B of the tap to the network switch. Finally, we connect in our monitoring workstation, which is our monitoring workstation is simply a PC or a laptop that has Wireshark installed on it. And then we connect this to the monitoring port of the tap. We set Wireshark running on our monitoring workstation and we'll be able to capture traffic passing to and from Tom's computer. What are the advantages of using an Ethernet tap? Quite simply, Ethernet taps are the most comprehensive way to capture all traffic and do not suffer from the same overload problems that can happen when we're using port monitoring, particularly on busy networks. Second advantage, once the tap has been inserted, you don't need to interfere with any of the other site equipment to be able to capture traffic. We don't need to install any software on any of the hosts, like in method 1, or we don't need to configure any of the switches, like we did with port mirroring in uh, part method 2. The disadvantages of using a tap. Number one, a disadvantage of using a tap is that we have to break the network in order to insert the tap. For example, when we had Tom's PC connected to port 2 here, we need to remove that cable to be able to plug the cable into the tap and then cable the tap back up to the switch. So there's a small outage for a couple of minutes or a couple of seconds, depending on how quickly you can do it. Second disadvantage, an Ethernet tap is not something you're going to have lying about the place. You will actually need to go out and purchase a tap specifically for this purpose in order to use it for uh, troubleshooting your network. And the third problem is that taps are quite expensive so it's um, it's usually outside the budget of small uh, business networks.